Hi, this is Imtiaz again with another video on Launch Excel C2000 microcontroller in Core Composer Studio. And if you have watched my previous video, you um, you will remember that we uh, started a project uh, from scratch in the Code Composer Studio, and then we had to do a lot of work by adding a lot of files, different files from different folders into the current directory. And that was a very tiresome uh, procedure to set up any project in the Code Composer Studio. So this time what we will be doing is we will be using the system configuration tool that comes with the Code Composer Studio and we will import a project from the Resource Explorer. So that will automatically do all the setting that is required for the setting up a microcontroller in the Code Composer Studio. So to do that we will go to the Resource Explorer page. And in the Resource Explorer page, we will go to the Software section. And inside Software section, you see the C2000 where is installed already in the Code Composer Studio. And the uh, the green tag basically shows that yes, it is installed in the Code Composer Studio. If it is not installed, you can click on these three dots, and the Install option will appear here. And if we come down here in this C2000 where, we can find a lot of examples that come with this. Uh, in the Code Composer Studio. These are all the examples that include uh, example from ADC, PWM and I2C, SPI. So the best approach is to get one of the examples from here and then start your project and then build upon that example. Uh, but what we are going to do now is we will search for an empty project and in the empty project, I will select this one, the ZWT. Basically, the IC used on the Launch Excel has this package, ZWT. So I will select this one and import it to the Code Composer Studio. So you see, this is imported in the Code Composer Studio directory, and I will first rename it. And yes, I, I forgot to mention that this video is basically about how to set up an I square C. Uh, module in the uh, Code Composer Studio using the C2000 microcontroller and the uh, the sensor that we will be using for this I2C um, demonstration is ADXL345. This is a very common sensor and I made a pre I made a video on how to set up that sensor and tried to explain it a little bit in my previous video. But in that video, I did everything in the simulink and but this time we will be doing it in the code composer studio now we will go to this uh, project inside the project and i'll rename this file as well and then uh, i should leave it c2000 um, this name looks good and then the other thing is um, we will go to this c2000 uh, system configuration file and here you will see uh, if you have ever used STM32 Cube IDE or Cube MX, uh, this kind of interface will be uh, familiar to you. So you see this is all uh, now graphical programming. So you will initialize uh, all the modules and microcontroller graphically here so that you will not have to do all the low the initialization code uh, yourself. So let's say we want to initialize the I2C module. So I'll click on I2C module and then I'll name it as ADXL345 and we want it to be in master mode and similarly the bit rate should be 400 kilohertz and it should be initialized in the transmitter mode and the bit rate should be the bits per data uh, data byte should be 8 bits and the data, data count I will initialize as, as one, but you can change it later. So you have the freedom um, to do that uh, later during in programming. And the address mode should be a seven bit address and the slave address, the slave address is also changeable there during programming, but I will um, keep it. I will put the exact value of the ADXL 345 here. So that is 83 in decimal. And then yes, we want to use interrupt and an interrupt Specifically, we want the register X is ready interrupt, receive data ready interrupt, and transmit data ready interrupt, and stop condition detected. Now we will come down here, and there are some other options as well. So you see, uh, there is a, an option of FIFO, so we don't want the FIFO mode, and uh, we want it to be in the free run. So the free run will help you in 
debugging when you are debugging so that will help you in uh, that mode and then we will come down here to the actual pins assignment so we will uh, use the i i to c a i to c a module there are basically two i to c in this launch excel uh, by the way this is launch excel f2 at 37.9d and the pins and that i'll be using are j2 for sda and j3 for scl and j2 is attached to uh, gpio 104 and j3 is attached to gpio 105 and you can find that from the data sheet and the all the initialization is now complete in this uh, graphical interface and but let me show you the generated code as well so the board.c and board.h files are generated here and you see these are all the codes uh, if you don't want to use this system configuration you will have to write these codes um, yourself so that is basically initialization of the gpios and the i square c module and this is the header file similarly uh, you can have a look at the to the actual microcontroller diagram as well so these are the actual microcontroller pins and the green one shows that the pins are assigned and the gray one means these pins are available to be assigned now we will build this project so that the board.h and board.c files are generated in the current program and now the build process is completed and if i come i mean if i come to this folder and see the system configuration so you will find the board.c and this is the board.c file and this is the board.h and then in the board.c file you will find this board underscore initialization function so that is if you open the main.c file in the main.c file i'll first remove this all these uh, comments because this is uh, not that much useful and you will find that the board underscore initialization function is automatically called and every time you uh, build your project so it will take setting from this system configuration and will include that in the board.c file so every change that you make in this board.c or board.h file it will be code that will be generated again by building the program i'll add uh, two files to this directory one will be I'll add two folder basically one will be include and the other one will be source and then uh, i'll add these two files to the uh, the path that is that is here you can find the include options here and i'll go to and then add these two folders So the include and uh, source folder are in, uh, added to the path now i'll apply and close it and then in the, in the include folder i'll add uh, i'll create a new header file and in the source file now uh, the code composer studio may not allow you to run the cpp file so for that we will go to the properties again and we'll go to the advanced options language options and then here we will click the uh, treat c files as c plus plus files and we'll hit apply and then um, it's good to go um, but i think i need to rename these two files into i'll rename it as uh, wire.h and we'll rename this into wire.cpp and the reason I uh, renamed these two files into this wire is to because later when I make the functions, so that function will be named after the function that we normally use in the Arduino. So it will be like uh, begin transmission, end transmission, read and write. So I want to keep it as exactly like the uh, Arduino functions. I'll rename these two as well in the comments. It will be y.cpp and it will be wild attach and uh, now the first function that i'm going to add into this uh, wire.h will be to scan the i square c bus so that we can find how many devices are connected on the i square c 
line and I will include the device.h file as well now I'll save it and now I'll go to the wire.cpp file and add some code to this function so I have already written the code in another file. I'll just copy that and paste it here and then I will try to explain it line by line. I'll paste the code here and in the code uh, I'll make some changes as well. Basically the, with the 7 bit address uh, you can have a maximum of 128 devices connected on the line. So uh, that is it will go from 1 to 127 uh, I'll ignore the 0 um, because I know there is no device connected on uh, that is having a 0 address so I'll just start from 1 and it will go up to 127 and the first thing uh, we will check is we will I'll delete this line and basically this means is we will check if the line is not busy and how do we um, uh, how do we find the line is not busy so I'll add this one line code that will ensure that the line is not busy and I'll just delete these two these two three lines and then the other thing is I'll configure the I square C module in master master mode and then in the repeat, repeat mode the address will be again it will be 7 bit uh, address mode that we already have set in the system configuration as well and the slave address will be this one so it will start from 1 so up, um, each time the loop um, increments so it will increment it by 1 and the base I should replace it with the I to C base and now we ensure that the transmission has been completed and uh, you see uh, we have used this condition this while loop is again if the transmission is not completed it will continue to execute in this loop and then we send a stop condition and here if we receive a, an acknowledged statement from the uh, sensor or the bus so that means that that sensor that sensor with that specific address has responded and it should be added to the uh, array and that is the the array name is available devices so I'll replace the name and it should be it should be added to this array that address so it means that we have captured that specific uh, sensor with that specific address that is present on the bus and then uh, we will clear the interrupt status and we will continue to execute this loop for 127 uh, time this specific code is by the way slightly changed but uh, more or less this is exactly the same that is provided by the one of the I2C examples uh, presents in the example list in the I square C category and you can find the uh, actual code there in the example as well so I just copied that code and pasted it here and with a little changes I made it applicable for my own application and now I'll remove this uh, returns success because the function is not returning anything and then I'll save it and now I'll build the program to see if it gives me any error or not and yeah one more thing we forgot to replace all the um, this base with the i2c a base and and yeah another thing uh, we have to add some uh, you see this thing this thing has to be added to the uh, wire.h file so let me copy that and paste it here so i pasted this thing that will be used there in the wire.cpp file and i'll save both file and then I'll uh, build the project to see if there is any error in the project or not. And now I'll go to the main.c file and um, execute that specific function to see if it catches any uh, sensor that is present on the bus or not so but before that we will have to add some few lines of code now I have added these three line of code and now I'll declare some variable here and then we will uh, run the actual code
and I'll add that uh, file as well to this main.c and that is the wire.h and here I'll call the uh, function and that is uh, let me copy it from here it is i to c bus scan and the inside it should be devices and if i execute this i expect that it will give me the addresses of all the devices that are connected on this bus so let's see uh, how many we can catch in this on this bus i2c bus let me plug in the uh, microcontroller into the laptop and then we will execute this code and first let me build the program again to see if there is any error or not and you see there is no uh, no more error uh, let me now uh, debug the program and execute this specific function to see if there is uh, we can catch the i2c module my i2c sensors uh, on the i2c bus or not and we are here now in this uh, debug mode and i'll remove this thing and if i execute this yes you see we have successfully captured uh, almost uh, i think one two three and four yes four uh, sensors are connected on this imu with this gy80 and the first one has an address of 30 the second one is uh, 83 and this one is 105 and 119 and this one is the accelerometer and i think that is enough for this video in the next part of this video we will discuss um, how can we get the data and program the this specific sensor uh, the accelerometer with this address and uh, so that's it for this video i'll see you in the next video thank you